Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast, a weekly brainstorm session between two friends that is currently in its 36th episode. My name's Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. And this week, what are we talking about? We're talking about ignorance this week. What, what sort of things would that include? <laughs> Not knowing stuff. Not knowing stuff. <laughs> Not knowing stuff. And things about, like, how I don't like ignorance and how it can be quite difficult to be tolerant of ignorance in yourself and in others, or certainly in myself. Maybe there's ways in which it can be a positive. Well, I've got, I've got some thoughts on that. All right. I think age relates. There's some interesting things with age. There's a bit of self-awareness stuff. Oh, we've got to, lots to talk about, but let's, let's play the title music. <laughs> Michael, how was your week? My week was a bit, a bit on the depressed side. <laughs> I got some. Uh, I found someone whose opinion I very much value, and he told me my new song that I worked very hard on was total shit, and <laughs> which I can see his perspective on it. I can understand why and have accepted this idea. But yeah, I just basically recorded and worked really hard on this very personal... So I just wanted to kind of tell my my childhood story in a song, like, but it was kind of a pop song, quite a kind of big production thing. But um, yeah, I think the kind of the, the, the outcome was, yeah, don't do that. No one needs that. <laughs> I'm like, OK, fine. It's just for people that I trust and not... It's not going to change the world. I shouldn't spend a year making a music video learning how to make pop-up books and shooting that as a whole thing which was my plan but it just means I'm in a bit of a okay well what next but I did think I might like just drop a little bit of that track into this podcast and then just leave it at that I think you should in other things I've you know I've not been working I've just been trying to figure out where I'm what my mission is meeting lots of different people as accruing allies one um, one piece of advice I received was to maybe ask podcast listeners what we should be working on like maybe some little polls or something maybe you know if you had one or both of us on a world changing project what would that be that's something I think we maybe need to come up with some multi choices on um, uh, but yeah how's your week Ivanka my, my week was very excellent I was on holiday I was yeah. in Croatia land. Mm. I arrived in Croatia hot off their attendance at the World Cup football final. Um, well, you got so, to that World Cup. You, you you were winning either way, weren't you? Not England, Croatia. Well, then, the, but yes. <laughs> but yes, and... Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah. But then the final, even though Croatia lost, they celebrated like they won. It was right. a lot of fun. <laughs> It was very, it was very entertaining, um, and so it's been a very positive sort of thing for the, for the general mood. The big parties on the street. We weren't there. We arrived the next day. We arrived. There. I was slightly apprehensive about flying into a country where everyone was going to have a hangover, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we, we everything was fine. Uh, the weather was nice. We went swimming. We saw people. We saw family. Um, it was lovely. You know. Excellent. And we we really tried not to do too much DIY, so we just did <laughs> two days of clearing rubble. That was all right. So we redistributed it around the garden and made various sort of semi-ornate things out of rocks at various spots in the garden rather <laughs> than having to try and carry them elsewhere. <laughs> it's hmm. like, oh, look, what we really need in this corner of the garden is a rock. <laughs> so we had fun. There you go, it. living the life of... of freedom yes so I, i'm quite jolly i did loads of running Ooh, what sort of distances and times not very far i did time i see i didn't do i've i've i don't know if i've told you this previously but every so often i i kind of i try and run i hate it <laughs> i'm one of those people that starts running and i can always if i can't run 5k i'm quite upset with myself hmm. so i can always run 5k but it's done like through gritted teeth and <laughs> what i've only done 200 meters uh. since i last look i don't like it and i i downloaded on the, uh, the the kindle the other day this book called beginner's luck for okay. running 
Anyway, the big thing in, that he bangs on about, so he's got, he's got a 10-week programme, and by the end of the 10 weeks, you should be able to run for an hour. He does say that if you're fit and have run before, you don't start week one, so I didn't. I picked a week that I was comfortable with. And the big thing is you've got to run slowly. Mm-hmm. Just run slowly. And I know this sounds like really, really simple advice, but I went for my first run off his book and I was like, that is the most fun I've had running ever. Oh, my God, I love running. I came home and Nick was like, what is the matter with you? What's that? So so because he, 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 you know, I started off on such a positive, I've actually persisted with the programme. Oh, there you go. So I'm now up to, I don't know, 45 minutes running. Okay. Which, you know, which is quite major. I've just got this new um, Nokia watch. So no longer the ugly Apple watch to deal with that the battery runs out after three hours. I've got this little Nokia thing that doesn't actually look too bad and is uh, the battery lasts 25 days. 25 days? <laughs> I checked the battery this morning after using it all day yesterday. It said 100%. And it's got a little walk counter and it tracks your heartbeat and it doesn't look like absolute turd like the Apple Watch. <laughs> and doesn't cost... <laughs> Four times as much. Seven hundred million pounds. Yeah. So I, I'm just like, and no more mm. notifications on my wrist, which I just didn't really appreciate that much anyway. I just um, and no more like apps that you're like, I'm going to try and use the the Maps app to just see where I am. Oh no, I've got to lift my wrist while I'm on my bike in a weird way, and then oh no, there's a button to press. Oh, I pre- oh I've got to wait for it to do something. But to do that, I'll probably have to put my wrist down. Then when I lift it back up again, it will have just forgotten what it was doing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, cool. I mean, it just doesn't work unless it's performant and it's just not... Well, the, well, the one I had wasn't performant. It was like a first generation one, maybe the newer ones. But I'm waiting for the redesign, um, waiting for it to get the iPhone 4 kind of style looking like a nice phone at last instead of some plasticky rounded cornered piece of shit. Which... <laughs> <laughs> Do you not like the Apple phone? The Apple, Apple Watch. watch. No, I think it's... The, the, the iWatch. The iClock. It's called the Apple Watch and it's ugly as fuck. Although I do support it in my apps. Part of the reasons why I wanted to talk about ignorance was because... I think in many ways my own ego is attached to not being ignorant. Mm, mine too. <laughs> so, so I'm like, so I really don't like it in myself. I feel very uncomfortable when I think I don't know what is being discussed or I don't understand it or I don't know enough to contribute. And I think perhaps I am projecting onto the world <laughs> that, you know, the discomfort people feel when they're ignorant is actually stopping a lot of proper conversations Mm -hmm. you know just to say well I I don't understand what that means I think I I have oft banged on about the whole idea that part of the problems in the world are down to the what has become this sort of celebration of ignorance it's no longer Uh, embarrassing to be ignorant yeah that's a a massive yeah that's you know we we and I think that's a massive problem why is it okay to not understand basics you know, of course, not everybody can know everything. Not everyone has the opportunity to learn. Not everyone. There's lots of lots of reasons why people remain ignorant on a particular. And frankly, there's there's so much knowledge in the world now. You can't possibly know everything. Mm. But like you say, you know, we can't all live to three hundred to learn everything. So therefore, finding some comfort, comfort, finding a way of feeling comfortable about going. Excuse me, I don't understand. Well, that's that's um, not how it's gone, is it? It's like no, no. you're that's not valid. Because I don't understand it. Instead of, no. oh, can you, you know, can I try and understand? It's just, it's gone away from that. Well, I was having an um, interesting conversation with uh, with Stuart yesterday because we, we were chatting about something and, you know, we did the, we did the usual Brexit, you know, check-in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were talking about the fact that, you know, when what, what's most frustrating about the way um, the narrative seems to be going is that uh, the EU are being blamed for us choosing to leave and then them them not 
being nice. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? See, see, this is why we need to leave because when we try and leave, they make it hard. Even uh, though that was partly <laughs> our idea to make it hard. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we're the one that came up with a fine, but it's okay, we're going to stockpile food. The reason I mention this is because what Stuart was talking about is like this is a backlash to 400 years of enlightenment. You know, that we used to believe that if some, you know, your child got ill, it's because you the, the woman in a village was a witch mm. or, you, you, you know, God was punishing you. And then we you know, learn how to think about things in a scientific way where you, you know, by via experiments prove cause and effect. And now we've got these people going, it's because of immigrants. And we're like, no, it isn't. Here's a graph and some data. And they go, yeah, but no. Well, yeah, <laughs> so not. as a race, we are used to simplistic explanations of, of complicated things and like most people are very uncomfortable with the idea that, oh, right, it's something that is complicated and I can't understand. Because you can understand a witch, you can understand an anthropomorphised random force of the universe with weird anger issues, such as a <laughs> deity in the sky. But it's much harder to go, oh, it's just, uh, oh, it's, there's quantum mechanics. What? Oh, there's actually, like, long-term effects. What? What do you mean? You know, it's just, where I guess, like, you know, most people aren't built for anything more complicated than a... But, I mean, we are... The thing is, we're, we're, we're very tuned to humanist explanations of, thing, of complex things. So the most complicated thing that we understand is another person. And in terms of their intentions, in terms of their kind of random... Their behaviours can be under, are the most complex thing we can possibly understand, um, as opposed to, like, laws of physics and those kinds of things. So, yeah, we want to anthropomorphise our understanding of things. We want to kind of put a human face on it. And we want to put a human face that we've seen in the street on it. And we, that's easier to do than putting a kind of... Or like a mysterious lizard people. I don't know. What do you reckon? <laughs> I, think, I think there is something about the... I hadn't thought about it in those I got, terms. I don't think I had of... by the way my, uh, <laughs> my <laughs> rambling went in the end. <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't know this is what I think. I just, I think it's all down to, at a certain level, understanding a sort of the scientific explanations of the world make our lives completely insignificant <laughs> therefore i think it's all down to our egos not allowing for mm. the ideas they're like it's too much i think i've already said on this one time when I, you know that the first time i was looking at a encyclopedia and understood how big the or attempted to experience in my head how big the universe mm. was I found it terrifying. The universe is so big. So the, this sort of the first time I I've sat there, I distinctly remember sitting down, looking at this encyclopedia with my brother and my father, and we were talking about the planets and how big everything was. And I suddenly realised it was like it was literally a gasping for air moment. Mm. Like, oh my god, this is just awesome in its bigness. Mm. <laughs> and I can't. And I, and I suddenly understood how short life was. Mm. And I think a lot of knowledge is scary. Yes. It makes you feel really uncomfortable. It makes you feel like, you know, and then there's things like you say, like when people start talking about quantum physics, when they talk, which is hard to understand and it makes your head hurt. Like to what end? Yeah. <laughs> it takes a special kind of nihilist at the age of 16 to kind of hear that maybe we're just machines created by our DNA to propagate itself, to just sort of like accept that. And so I think that anyone, <laughs> like I, I just kind of, yeah, in, in, in biology or something, I was like, wow, that's, uh, yeah, 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 that's yeah. harsh. And then yeah. a couple of days later, I was like, yeah, I mean, it will makes way more sense than any other explanation I've heard. So, oh, yeah. well, I mean, nothing. Never mind. Yeah. There's a difference between sort of like ignorance of stuff that is you would actually have to invest quite a lot of time in to understand. But sometimes it's lazy, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's just like I'm not interested in finding anything out, even though it's not. This isn't quantum mechanics. This is just basic empathy. This is just 
yeah. like not sticking your fingers in your ears and that's yeah. that's when it's just offensive yeah i think so and i think offensive is the right word it's in the same way that people who are exceptionally rude but i believe have been brought up to not be or understand that there are norms in society and i you know of course i make exception there are exceptions for people who with um i don't know spectrum spectrum <laughs> spectrum folk that you know that's it you know, that's how they are that's how they experience the world that's fine but if you're if you're if you're not there and you have the ability then I find that quite uh, offensive and I find it quite offensive to be laughingly ignorant about uh. things I, I overheard a conversation between two young you know maybe late teenagers early 20s types and uh they were having this you know, well, if we leave the EU, we're not leaving Europe. And I was like, hmm? <laughs> yeah. they clearly didn't understand. They were having a conversation with each other, not quite understanding the difference between geographic Europe, you know, <laughs> the fact that we are part of a continent and we can't up sticks and leave. Um, and it's just like, what? hello? <laughs> I think as I get older, I'm going to start going, uh, excuse me, I couldn't help. <laughs> But overhear your conversation. Right, here are some facts. Here's a book. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then people will stab me in the street and spit at me, but at least I'll have tried. Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> but yes, there's a the, the, the ignorance of simple things, like not understanding that the, you know, a Syrian refugee has experienced war and that's why they're here. Like, you know, just... Hmm. Open your ears a bit. I don't. I don't hmm. really understand it. Did you hear um, Deborah Francis White's somewhat triumphant conversation with a sort of anti-feminist bigot yeah, type school? I but did that. Hear I mean, that, that was. I mean, yeah. I mean, she she did it. <laughs> like what? Yeah, you just yeah, some sort of school kid that just started out just being you're a feminazi kind of thing, and then just kind of. Just with a few little, a few words being having being made to sort of see. Oh, what you you don't think? Do you agree that fifty percent of the world's population should make one hundred percent of the decisions? Um, no. Well, there you go. You're a feminist. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that but uh, that reminds me of that video they did walking around Guildford, asking people if they, you know, do you believe in uh, free education? Yes, I do. Do you believe in the free education? Yes, yes, I do. Da, da. And it's like going around to people. Well, you should vote for Jeremy Corbyn. Mm. <laughs> it's like, what? I am not a socialist. <laughs> so ignorance is defended in terms of. Liberal elites, you liberal elites, kind of looking down on us and thinking you know everything. That's kind of the attitude, right? Yeah, liberal yeah, 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 elitism, yeah. Yeah. which I find ironic that the truth behind it is that you're defending people that are genuinely, purely elitists. Donald Trump, David Cameron, yeah. Boris Johnson... They're actual elite, they're actual Etonian elitists who believe that they are entitled to wield all the power to, regardless of their own competence. So, like, it's weird that elitism is this word that the right has started associating with liberals when, you no, it's the, we're, we're, we're trying to listen to people, we're trying to learn things we're trying to like address things and improve while you are in the thrall of actual elitists that think you're scum. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. I just don't understand it at all. <laughs> I just don't understand. I really really don't. I think the um I think this is where some of my you know, Yugoslav communist education comes into this as well. And some of this whole, you know, the, the, the kind of, I've told you my English grandpa was a British yes. Communist Party member. So he used to buy me all these stories about, you know, dear grandfather Lenin and all <laughs> this kind of stuff, you know, like proper propaganda. But the proper propaganda conversation then sparked this whole, and may, you know, that you we talked and, and learned in terms of being an ignorant proletariat in, you know, like not being manipulated, being used, being because that's what's happening here. Mm. 
it is that is what's happening you are being you know like there's this uh, and i and i don't understand why we stopped at what point and how they've managed to turn and i do think it's a they because the, the you know the owners of the Daily Mail are another set of elitists, mm. proper yeah. the elite, yeah. who are manipulating all of us. They are doing the divide and conquer mm. beautifully. And they're doing it by somehow creating a narrative where being ignorant is is all right, being knowledgeable and aware and, and thinking critically about what's happening in the world somehow makes you the liberal elite. And I don't ha- understand how to fix it either. But that's, I think, part of my problem. Mm. It's like we have to take the moral high ground and not be offended when someone just starts a conversation with some sort of slur and kind of push through that. And it's, but it's, it's, it's tiring when, you know, your only choice is to be the grown up and 70 percent of the time you're just going to get nowhere because it's yeah. going to get kind of tangled up in some conspiracy, absolute alternate reality, the whole bubble problem of, like, how can you reason with someone whose frame of reference is so fundamentally different to your own? But maybe if children, if children, if we can kind of get young people, like, they're going to be a lot more... They just... I don't know, like, even... I remember we did a, like, user testing session... This is stupid. We did a user testing session a couple of years ago somewhere and, and like there was these sort of teenage girls and one of them was like, oh, what about like animated GIFs? And I was like, shut up, though. <laughs> it's, it's always been GIF. And the, but the, because there was someone young and they'd just been told that by the person who was like, well, what, who am I to kind of like, yeah, I'm not used to saying GIF, so who cares? Whereas I'm like, why are you saying GIF for you? <laughs> Bloody hell. As a kind of microcosm <laughs> of resistance to to changing of habits. That's partly the whole, then the comfort with what you know and having what you know challenged and questioned is a different side of it that can happen to anybody. And it's not just about being, um, being open-minded enough to go, I don't know. There's learning versus defending stuff you feel you've already learned. I suppose. And that's that's comes into yeah. like something I said, I just kind of mentioned age. I think something that happens as you get older is you kind of stop learning and your beliefs kind of solidify, which actually makes you a lot more effective as a decision making entity. Like people in their 20s are sort of like still don't quite know what they th- should think about anything yet or what they should say or whether this is right. or the, Like very kind of obsessed with how other people see them. But like then in your 30s, you kind of like solidify a bit in your opinions and your attitudes but which helps you be a different sort of member of society but it's much harder to then kind of like it's you still have to kind of consciously be open to changing your ideas about things because things are just going to keep changing I, I guess like the acceleration of information and progress and technology and you know awareness of things widening circle of empathy is something that just that's going to keep going even though in the old days probably by the time you were 30 there wasn't much more to kind of experience around you so there's no point kind of being that kind of sponge or that kind of like not quite sure of yourself person anymore i think there's something weird about language changing your language and and learning something new i think they're different Mm. like the reason we we all say gif and and we all call them gifs and we're very comfortable calling them gifs and when somebody tries to correct the way you speak it feels very unnatural yeah i don't it really does i personally Mm. find that you know somebody corrects my pronunciation of something and i keep saying a thing and i'm like what we've we've talked about how difficult it is um using neutral pronouns or non-gender specific pronouns. We've not grown up. I've spent 40-odd years not speaking that way, and it's very hard to force yourself to say different words or say them differently. That's, I think, slightly different and a slightly different type of discomfort to um, not knowing something, Mm. you know, that sort of like, oh, or new knowledge, new discoveries coming out. So, you know, personally, I'm very open to, you know, when I was... I don't know, when I was in Yugoslavia, they used to give you antibiotics all the mm. time. Every time I the doctor sneeze, here's some antibiotics, always penicillin mm. anyway, blah, 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 loads and loads. Of, you know, and I'm very comfortable now with not doing, mm. you know, not asking for them, not taking them unless I have to, da, 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 making sure my child isn't given them, you know, like sort of 
Um, I, I, it's not the best example because my grandpa is a pharmacist and he was never that into right. taking antibiotics. But, you know, like the knowledge we have now about sort of intermittent fasting, that kind of thing, or how bad sugar is for right. you or what the correct level, not smoking. Mm. You know, you kind of find, find out new things. You go, oh, yeah, I didn't realise that. OK, yeah. But then I mean to say words differently, which is why, for example, that episode we were talking about the guilty feminist about the using ableist language i was like oh well what words can i use <laughs> please don't please don't stop me having to call people mental you know i like saying that people are mental <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't, that's, but, but you're not saying it about disabled people you're saying about no 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 i just but that's the implication yeah. in language it's like ableist language if i'm if i'm throwing around terms like moron or idiot or you know mentalist now i'm being Ableist. Yeah, but that's, I mean, and that's I, fair. You can't go around calling Donald Trump a s**t, can you? No. So why should you be allowed I, to go around can't. calling him other words that have been used to put disabled yeah, people down? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. But that's I need, not the I need point, to you like, know. You know, I, but, I, but, I, but I need to go through that sort of like internal... Um, I, well, I've got a story. I, I Like the first time I went, I went like a few years back. I was still drinking. Um, I went to, for the first time in my life, to a gay bar with some colleagues from work sort of late on a Friday night. You were drinking in a gay bar? Yes. I hadn't really experienced that, that world. <laughs> and like, and at one point someone, someone said, don't point. Because I just kind of gone, look at that. Person that, you know, I guess I just was like, it was just all new information to me. And I was like, like what's going on? I, you know, I just didn't really understand. It was all just new. And then I got like chastised and I got so angry about that. I was like, fuck you. Like, why are you shutting me down? I'm just, you know, because because I absolutely just had no awareness. That, like, oh, God, there's this whole I just I was just like, I don't I don't know the rules of this environment. Why are you giving me a hard time for not knowing them? It's all new to me. Um I, uh, so, yeah, that, I think that was someone kind of doing it in a kind of a mean way. But also, you know, I, I don't know, like, it's hard when, when, when you weren't even consciously doing something and to be told off yeah. for it just makes you kind of really like, fuck you, like, get yeah. off me. Well, yeah, I think that's because it, it's an attack. Perhaps I'd rather you, you point, you know, you behaved inappropriately, but... I was able to tell you that that was inappropriate in a way that didn't get offended rather than people hide. And I think there's a bit of hiding and shouting at the moment instead mm. of, oh, yeah, I really, I didn't realise that's fair. Because I'm personally now going through this whole, you know, now internalising what I've heard about ableist language and how do I how do I be not be nice? Mm -hmm. How do I be nicer? Uh, but that takes time. And listening to it on the Guilty Feminist podcast is a very safe way of hearing it. Yeah. Nobody was correcting me talking to somebody or yeah. stopped my flow. Yeah. Because that's yeah, another, that's... you know, like you're there, you are going, oh, yeah, I haven't seen that before. And they're going, <laughs> how dare you have that thought? And you're like, like oh, oh, I was in a nice mood then. And you <laughs> just killed it. I was experiencing you know? wonder. <laughs> you know, okay, I was wondering at perhaps, you know, inappropriately, I but I didn't know that. I don't I think know, I was, was being just... mean. Well, maybe I was. I'd... Yeah, who knows? I don't know, but That's yeah. Like some crazy looking people in this world that I hadn't seen before. <laughs> The spotting it in ourselves bit of this is the bit that I, you know, I sometimes find horribly embarrassing when I realise that I, you know, I don't know, I don't, I didn't quite understand what he just said. Or, um, thankfully, that is a very rare occurrence. No, it's not. It happens all the time. I go, really? Did I? Oh no. <laughs> like, but I think what's changing with me with age, I am instead of getting deeply embarrassed. I've bec I am I maybe even deliberately trying to make myself go. I'm sorry. I what? Mm. <laughs> I didn't understand. Should I have known that? Did I read that? I don't know. What do I have to read to understand what you're saying better? You know, it's a deliberate choice to make that yeah. effort. It can be quite impressive as well to ask ask a question about because oh, you know half the time yeah. someone has just casually dropped in some acronym that you haven't heard and there's a real temptation to just nod along yeah but i think like half the time you say well 
sorry, what's uh, that acronym? And they go, oh, yeah, no, that's like an internal thing. That, and actually, you would have looked really stupid if you'd pretended to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think it does pay off as well. And it's just an acceptance that I, I, in the past, I was different and I have learned things since. And I don't, you know, the perfectionism, I suppose, is, is the sort of poisonous thing um, that if we can sort of escape, you know, imposing that on ourselves, then... But I, I agree with you. I, I, I hadn't thought about the sort of asking a question thing as being impressive. Mm. But it is. I hadn't thought about it like that. I'm thinking about instead of making it that people should be embarrassed, I don't know if you make it. Does anyone ever make it? It all comes from the inside, well, doesn't it, it? It's very much case by case because sometimes it's embarrassing because you're just like, oh, my God, I've been doing this for 10 years and I just didn't know about that thing. Uh, but like that's still okay I think it's okay to be embarrassed by it worst things in this world yeah 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 some there people are, are worse things. terrified yeah. of embarrassment and that I mean that's definitely a 20s teenager thing like embarrassment is the absolute worst thing and then your dad's just immune to it and that's ugh, horrifying <laughs> to younger people and I guess we're old because we're not quite as kind of embarrassed, embarrassed yeah. by things anymore but what I don't know is if it's right that my child should already be telling me to stop singing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, mummy, you can't sing that. Aww. Why not? No, shh, shh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I had to wait till she was a teenager before I was embarrassing. So there's something impressive, I wrote down impressive, impressive about asking questions and asking for clarification. Um, you know, and then the person being asked does that. I'm glad you asked me because now there's an opportunity for me to explain something that I obviously hadn't explained properly. Well, people just like the opportunity to go over the basics because it's like, oh, I know this well, stuff. That's I can kind of, obviously, <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. if someone just isn't getting it still <laughs> when you explain it, then that, that turns into stupidity rather than admitting ignorance, which is... Uh, yeah. And sometimes it's like, oh, well, I mean, they really should have known that. What's uh, source control? Um, probably not hiring you for this uh, job as a programmer. As in anything. As in anything. Um. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably some listeners to this podcast that might not be super uh, aware of what source control is. but uh, oh, I'm sorry. I remember going into an architecture firm in Hong Kong and going, so, I mean, everyone, you know what it's like when you put together a website and everyone's got these, and everyone in the room, there's a table of about 15 people and they're like, no, we haven't done a website build before. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my world. It just looks like my world, but it's a completely different industry. <laughs> so none of you have ever been involved in the building of a website and seen how it kind of like actually pans out in real life. Okay, right. We're, we're, I've, I've, right back to basics. Interesting. <laughs> um. Let me throw a question out there. Before we go back into the, the truth of ignorance being largely negative, I, I think ignorance can be a positive. I think, well, here's the thing. Sometimes I miss the naivety I had when I was younger that let me embark upon something that was way more difficult than I thought it was going to be and ruined my life for a long time. But I did it, right? And now I just wouldn't have even attempted it because I already have internalised all of the painful things that in reality, going to be part of that. And it's sort of like, as ignorance is conquered, there's fewer and fewer things that you think are worth doing. And that's something yeah. I kind of miss. Sometimes I just wish, can I just have a little mind wipe and be naive again and just do something stupid? I mean, looking at the... the uh, mm -hmm. my, I, I still My child still doesn't understand that you can't grow down, you can only grow up. Okay. <laughs> so she used that last night. So it's like, when... You and, and Daddy grow down and we're all the same size. <laughs> then we can do... I can't remember what we were going to be able to do, but then, then she's like, hmm. And then Granny can look after us. Right, so she, <laughs> you're... That's a very strange system. Yeah, it's like... It's, she was like... She, she just, and then she picked one of my mum's friends, Jill. Jill could look after us. Right. Because she'd be good <laughs> after all of us because then we can all do things together. Right. And you wouldn't have to go to work, was what she said. <laughs> right, so when you grow down, I'm looking forward yeah. to growing down. That'll be good. You don't have to go to work. 
Because, you know, then you can't hang out with your kid. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. And who's going to change no... my nappy, though, when I grow down? <laughs> Maybe oh. you don't want to grow down that far, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, it's, you know, it's quite fun listening to somebody construct the world in their head that, don't, that is without limitations. Yeah. There's a well, lot it's more you can do. From your own experience, like when I was a kid, I, one of my <laughs> early theories was... Uh, like I used to have peanut butter on my sandwiches and then one day I was spreading some Marmite on some margarine and it's turned the same colour as peanut butter. I was like, is this how they make peanut butter? <laughs> <laughs> my dad was like, what? <laughs> and I try it. I was like, oh, it still tastes like Marmite. OK, we're, we're, you know, we're sort of like figuring <laughs> things out as we go. <laughs> Some ignorance, when it's when it's challenged, hurts because it goes against the grain of what you believe. So if you tell like a staunch casual misogynist that they shouldn't be using, that they need oh that word isn't really appropriate, that's painful to them because they have to kind of untangle like parts of their personality and their beliefs in a way that they just weren't planning on doing. Whereas the other side of that coin is when you're learning things that help you you're like oh that explains loads of stuff that i didn't previously understand that's the ignorance that you're happy to get rid of if that makes yeah, sense yeah, yeah. because it's yeah, like yeah. oh i actually not understand more now oh every woman is just a person who's like different right no yeah that now that i can make sense of it's you know anyway like um yeah 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 it, I, the, yes, that I see the the diff. There is the, 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 I can see the difference. Yeah, well, I can see. Well, like I say, with the DNA thing, like you know, I come from a religious background, and suddenly someone's like, "Well, we, I mean, basically, it's DNA trying to kind of propagate itself." And I'm like, "Oh, I hate that," but it actually like ties up a load of things that were previously just all over the place. So, on that subject, <laughs> why is ignorance allowed? You like. So really evolutionarily, the celebration of ignorance isn't a positive. Surely. No, but I think it's a symptom of the information age. It's a symptom of oversaturation. It's a symptom of there being too much information now and it's a defence mechanism. That There's no mm. way around accepting a certain level of ignorance, so they're just setting the bar a bit lower. I see. So, like, as opposed to going, look, I haven't got time to understand the blockchain. <laughs> uh, they're going, I don't have time to understand the impact of the referendum. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think are different. There's, um, <laughs> there's uh, the Philip K. Dick quote, uh, reality is the thing that if you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. And that's the sort of stuff that you're going to get forced to see this, to understand this yeah. sooner or later. So maybe it would have been nice to sort of understand it in advance of making the decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or at least have a yeah. kind of an instinct about it. Yeah, I can see that sort of information age is not something. Well, you know, we've alluded to it, but you, that's the first time you've said it. I mean, it's not, my, there is that. It's, not a term, it's not my first choice of term. I can't... I can't no, but yeah. I, it's a good... I mean, it, it just brings home the fact, you know, that it sort of gives a bit of size and gravitas to the idea of having to le live to a 300 to learn everything you want to learn and that's only okay. the, that's only what's available today you know, yeah yeah it's going to keep changing also stuff's going to get pushed out your brain as well so yeah yeah i mean <laughs> augmented brain I obviously like mega brain i just when i worked with ian farrell he used to refer to him himself so it's like yep yeah, second brain's here so i'd go don't, we mustn't forget this thing <laughs> <laughs> but it's like uh having a spare brain would be useful <laughs> often i think so maybe there's going to be a correction back up I mean, reading and writing, that's not acceptable. Not being able to read and write, that's not no. acceptable, is it? No, I hope not. So, um, If you were like, you know, being... oh, I can't... Well, you're, you're not really part of the world anymore if you can't read and write, if you can't... I mean, there are lots of... There's a surprisingly high number of functional, illiterate... Functionally illiterate people. I don't know the statistics, mm. but I'm sure we could find them quite easily. Presumably they're but... not the ones we're having problems with on Twitter. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> but I mean, we still haven't got over the we haven't got over the hump of the fact that every not everybody can read a, read and write. But let's assume we've got past reading and writing. What is the lowest? What is what would you consider to be the lowest levels of accept, acceptable levels of ignorance? No, I mean, I mean, How it's an do attitude, you even come up right? With that? It's a, it's, it is and, an attitude, yeah. and it's also, I don't know. Everyone has their resources that they have. It's. I think it comes down to edu- like how we structure education and. But, yeah, yeah, I agree, and I, I think that you know what's even more worrying about this um, current state of affairs is the amount of cuts that are being made to the education system. You know, it's like it's going to make it all worse. Yeah. Um, and never mind whether we necessarily agree with what the system should be or how what education should look like. You know, we have to agree that it must be funded properly. Otherwise, yeah. there's no chance of Absolutely. closing the ignorance. You know, like, perhaps we should start talking about an ignorance gap or an education gap but, as well as a fun- money, you know, it's like the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also think, like, there's the, the world we're in now is, I think, kind of thinking back about that age thing, it used to be, well, you can soak up X amount and maybe kind of become an expert in this thing and then, you know, just get on with your life. I think we need to see education as a continuous, lifelong yeah. process that everyone, like, we, as soon as you kind of leave school doesn't mean you... You, you, it's done. okay to stop learning <laughs> no. um, but also something a benefit we do have with video and interactive things is that it can be more palatable than it ever has been yes. to learn important things um, you can have your podcasts you can have like Louis Theroux Louis Theroux's transgender kids episode yeah. was the first time I was like right yeah like actually that no one's doing this for attention or like the parents aren't kind of that that it's it's a thing that is you can't ignore because it's real it's happening it's not gonna so if it's presented in a way that is palatable then it's a lot more it can be fun but then this kind of keys into just the responsibility of the media and entertainment industries and all that kind of thing as well I mean we've 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 been being told that we have to be more liberal our whole lives probably like school has gone. Oh, you got to say this one's this example in this math book has a female protagonist. What? This feels weird. Why is it a she all of a sudden? It's always he. like I, like yeah. we've been kind of that. That's kind of been happening for a long time, and a lot of this is a backlash to kind of I guess people feeling like enough is enough with this liberal, you know over liberalization of everything and even like Stephen Fry has some has some there's a video of him kind of complaining about political correctness in on some level which is like oh come on man like but the, I guess that there is a certain level of, at which it starts to feel a bit unnecessary but then you can't really identify it unless you know and maybe every sort of liberalized you know every progression is absolutely necessary it's like well why uh, I think when we talk about ignorance, we're upset about, yeah, willful ignorance. Yes. If anyone's got any ideas about how to tackle willful ignorance, I'm all ears. Well, there's, I think there's also this thing about, you know, oh, we'll just look it up, we Google it. You're like, how do I... But you, you kind of need to know what to Google sometimes. Yep. You, need to be, you need to be curious enough on a thing to go, oh, let me check that, if that's true. I don't think I'm necessarily of the opinion that everyone needs to hold loads of information in their heads all at the same time. But it's more about having enough of a curiosity about the world to go, you know, I don't understand this um, and therefore, you know, I probably need a few more bits of information in order to be able to understand it like mm. you know I remember going, going I got when I was doing that contract at the Labour Party it, it suddenly became very apparent to me quite quickly that I didn't really know exactly how laws were made right you know I was like blah yeah. blah blah act of parliament blah 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 and so I, you know I went and oh I see so then it goes like this and then it goes here and then it goes to the House of Laws blah, blah, blah. you know it's oh. like 
do you know you knew you were going to be tested though so yeah, I didn't sort know of like I was that was an incentive tested. the same reason i studied physics rather than like um music at university was because i that i knew i i needed to have that kind of testing pressure in order to kind of try and get my head into it in a way that music is something i just felt like or programming even oh, you do anyway um yeah so, yeah, 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 that's true. Because I, because I, I just knew that in order to have conversations in those circles, I needed way more knowledge <laughs> in my head. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, less sort of, um, and it's fine. And there's many topics that I have a uh, sort of a passing knowledge of or but you know i can i can fake it a bit like talking about motorbikes for example <laughs> you know i know enough to talk to people who like motorbikes i don't want to know you know i don't need to know more in order to 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 be able to talk about it more i don't i'm not going to fix one i don't you know i can do you know what I mean? it's that sort of like and maybe there's levels of knowledge required the 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 the, the testing pressure where you yeah. don't want to look ignorant i guess people are upset when they didn't realize they were being tested yeah. Right. I didn't realise this was a, a, a tolerance yeah. exam. I thought I was just talking about that strange looking person over there because it was yeah, strange. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. oh no, it's turned into a test and I wasn't ready. I haven't studied, you know. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, maybe. That sounds familiar. <laughs> that resonates. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I didn't know. I was yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. I get that. I don't want yeah. the whole world to be school. I dropped out of school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So perhaps being kinder when, when presented with ignorance. Yeah, I think if, like if, 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 if we be could kind. Well, if we could just be like what people what people don't like is you're a feminazi because you're telling me off for not having realised that something was a thing. Um, if yeah, if we could just generally be kinder about. Yeah, you know, addressing ignorance, then maybe that would have an overall success. But how could you be kinder with Trump? Like, can you, Donald? You know that thing you said about Mexicans. Um, that was wrong. I don't know. Like, it takes a lot to untangle an entrenched frame of reference. But again, that's why I come back to it. it's. it's we, we're going to struggle to get anywhere with older people. So we've just got to wait for them all to die. Or it could just be a campaign for lifelong awareness and learning and progress and try and kind of change that cultural thing of you learn everything and then you're ready to, to OK, you, you're never going to have to stop yeah. learning, so get used to that idea and be ready when it happens so that it's not quite such a shock to the system. Maybe working in technology has been the... It's been very clear for for my whole career that my knowledge has a very short shelf life. It constantly evolves and has to be built yeah, upon. Exactly, yeah. It's sort of like each new thing you learn, it doesn't stop being useful. It just starts being a smaller part of an ever-growing puzzle. So maybe we are at a significant advantage. Yeah, we're used to being tired. <laughs> yeah, constantly not knowing. In fact, I, I did say that was one of the reasons somebody gave to my father about why I shouldn't do electronic engineering. Because as a woman, I wasn't going to have time to stay on top of it all. But yeah, I think that is, we are very lucky that we have maybe been programmed very early on to constantly feel, you know, constantly be chasing knowledge and constantly mm. be working on our yeah. ignorance. Um, whereas maybe there are other careers where you go and you study and you do and you don't necessarily have to learn so much so quickly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and okay, technology is now influencing everything, so yeah. all sorts of things. But maybe that's the we're early adopters so of this new we are paradigm. Early adopters of this never, you know, there is no career for life. Yeah. There is no one skill that you can learn that's going to last you for a forty-year work life. So just get over it yeah. and stop thinking that's going to be true. Maybe that's why you know we we need to be thinking in terms of a state that supports the fact that we. we kind of need to feel a bit more of a safety net to kind of catch up or like it's it's hard to sort of like take your foot off the accelerator even for a minute because you just know when you come back that you're gonna i think that's i think that's really our conclusion yeah it's exhausting yeah. but we're kind of used to it but for a lot of people they're not it's not just accepted as a fact of life so it's but it's going to catch you whatever you do so you probably might as well get used to it. And we just w can feel better by improving our institutions to be a bit more 
supportive of lifelong learning and um, being able to kind of catch up again if we need to. Well, maybe schooling needs to be more about learning how to learn rather than learning how to yeah. pass tests. Well, that's what I first learned. That's what I first realised when I started kind of a job. I was like, well, I don't know how to make an access database, but I know how to learn how to make an access database. And that turns out to be enough. So actually, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's actually a lot easier than you think. You just have yeah. to kind of be... It's not as hard as it might seem. You don't have to know all this stuff in advance. You don't have to have known all the words you aren't supposed to say in advance all you have to do is just trust yourself that you will learn things as you need to and then you'll be fine it's easy yay thanks for listening if you like the podcast, go to grandpodcast.com and click on that big orange subscribe button and then you'll always have the episode being automatically downloaded and get a little notification and you'll, you know, you're just going to keep up and be part of it and you're not going to miss any of our special offers. Um, where, can, <laughs> where can people find you, Ivanka? Uh, people can find me at Ivanka on Twitter. Uh, you can find me, michaelforestmusic.com and uh, what would be really lovely is if you could tell lots of people to listen to our podcast but also write us reviews do stars apple podcast seems to be a popular route mm. but you know youtube everywhere just you know tell people please be very nice of you please you we're begging you <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be the less needy one <laughs> well i mean we're doing this i hate these youtube videos these days that there's about 15 seconds of content and then 30 seconds of begging at the end it's like it's just jeez oh, um at the end after the podcast music fades out i'm going to put a little bit of that track that is probably not going to see the light of day in any other form than this segment on this podcast uh, so you know just because i put loads of work into it but yeah otherwise see you next week bye 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 bye, 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 bye. <laughs>